We are back, boys. Even though we never left, by back, I mean we're back on the Honda content. If you guys did not catch my last video and you guys are only here for content on the Honda, click the link on the top of the screen. Just go watch the last video. It's an absolute banger. We took the Subaru out to the track. It was my first actual circuit racing event and we won the entire thing. It was freaking awesome. The video is a banger. And even though that video was 100% based on the Subaru, I still had people in the comments saying, here for the Honda, update on the Honda. Everyone's wondering what's going on with the Honda. So I'm gonna tell you. This is how the Honda currently sits right now. We are now on episode six of the Turbo Honda Civic build series that nobody else has done on YouTube, at least. There's a lot of videos on 8th Gen Civics and a lot of videos on Turbo 8th Gen Civics, but not a lot of videos on how to turbo your 8th Gen Civic. This build series is specifically on the CX Racing Turbo Kit. So as you guys can see, we got the CX Racing intercooler mounted up, Sidewinder manifold, turbo is just sitting on a set of studs that I picked up from the hardware store. We're gonna get that mounted up here soon, but you guys will notice if you guys have been keeping track of this very strung out build series, we have intercooler piping sitting here now. So what I did off camera was I just wanted to know where all the intercooler piping went. So I got it all set out because I was trying to figure out in the last video what I was gonna do for rat hoses. And then I actually saw one of your guys' comments and you said that the CX Racing kit includes two aluminum hard pipes and four silicone couplers for rat hoses. So I had to check it out. And sure enough, you guys look at this for as much as you guys think the CX Racing kit is terrible quality and so do I, look at that. We got a coupler that goes to the rad right there, clamps to the hard pipe, it curves right under the throttle body so you can get an intercooler pipe on there and then goes right to our Jack Spania Racing upper coolant housing. And I will put a link to Jack Spania's website in the description. They sent us out the fuel rail, upper coolant housing and a couple other parts for this build. So the next thing and the goal in this video that I actually want to accomplish today is I wanna get all of the intercooler piping mocked up 100% bolted down with T-bolt clamps just to make sure that everything fits. I know we're gonna have to cut the frame a little bit on that side to get that intercooler pipe to clear, but I want everything clamped up to know that it fits. We're gonna have to reclock this turbo and rotate it to fit the intercooler piping, but I just wanna get everything mocked up today to make sure that the turbo kit and the intercooler piping all fits. The one thing that I'm worried about is gonna be the downpipe that is the second part of the downpipe because we have the first portion of the downpipe mocked up here. And if you guys can tell, I got a little spacer in here because if you guys have been following the whole build series, you would know that my downpipe was hitting the exhaust manifold if I bolted it right up to the turbo. So I went on Amazon and picked up this guy. It's a, I believe a 2.5 inch four bolt spacer. I'm gonna have a gasket on each side of this, put it on the back of the turbo, and we're gonna bolt that downpipe up and she should seal nice. And this thing is giving me that extra little bit of clearance on the back of the turbo for this to clear that manifold. So the downpipe's not hitting the manifold. But what I'm worried about is if that downpipe is now spaced out another inch or however thick that is, is the second part of the downpipe gonna line up with the factory exhaust system? Because my whole goal with this car is I wanna keep the factory exhaust so that it can stay nice and quiet when I'm driving in the city and everything like that. And then I bought an exhaust cutout. Which is right here. This is just off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description of this too, even though we're not gonna be installing this today. It's just the Evil Energy exhaust cutout. It's got the dump tube and all that good stuff. And it also has the electronic cutout. You can wire it in. And then they actually have wireless remotes where you can just press open and close. And then you can open and close it electronically inside of the car. Which is pretty dope because we're building this thing to be a sleeper. And so far, I think she's gonna live up to that. So first things first, for now, I got this upper rat hose mounted up from CX Racing but I do not have the lower rat hose mounted up. So I gotta pull the factory one out of there, get this one installed, and then I wanna get all the intercooler piping installed without any clamps on it, because I think we're gonna have to cut the frame right there. So let's start shimmying some stuff around and seeing what we can do here.
Let's go, boys. Look at that. This turbo kit looks like it's actually supposed to be in the car now. One thing I will say, though, and you guys are going to fight with this too, CX Racing did not make this easy to install this intercooler piping. You're going to have to wiggle it around to the perfect spot and tighten the clamps to make it fit, but it does fit eventually. Second thing I'm going to say, these couplers are not the right size on like any of the pipes. They all are like a hot dog in a hallway, and I'll show you what I mean. This kit may or may not be Boost Leak City once we get this all installed, but we're going to test that out before we put it on the dyno, obviously. Here's one coupler that's going to be going on the throttle body. Look at how easy that slides on and off. It's not squeezing that throttle body at all. You can actually wiggle it side to side. But I'm hoping when we put it on there, we're gonna squeeze the living piss out of it with that T-bolt clamp. And hopefully it should seal because the throttle body does have the little rib on the end of it so that the hose clamp grips and seals around that. But we got the upper rat hose installed with no clamps yet. We got the lower rat hose installed with no clamps yet. And it actually comes up super, super high from the lower rat hose up to there, which makes a lot of clearance for the intercooler piping. This intercooler pipe I just have chilling here. It's the one with the MAF sensor. You guys can see the bends and how it sits so that you guys know how to install it. It's gonna go with this big two and three quarter hose clamp to that silicone coupler 90 degrees down and it's gonna run down there. Now here's where this gets messy. If you guys look down there, that pipe is clearly not lined up with that pipe. So that coupler is not gonna work. And that coupler is this one right here. It's like a little 45 degree coupler. And that's because this is barely sitting in the coupler that goes to the intercooler because it can't get any closer because it hits the frame right there. So what we're gonna do is this frame goes in about that much of my finger right down to here from the tip. So we are gonna slice the frame in a line about here all the way down and then that intercooler pipe should fit. And then our blow off valve bolts up here and then this side will be set. This side doesn't really require much modification other than cutting the frame right there. This side, on the other hand, we're gonna have to play with the mounting point on the intercooler and kind of move it in and out a little bit. That's why I'm leaving these bolts all loose on the mounting points on the intercooler so we can move it back and forth. But it looks like on this side, I'm gonna be able to make this work with the factory AC condenser. Because if you guys saw any of the previous videos, we drilled and tapped holes in the AC condenser so that these are on rubber bushings so the intercooler isn't solid mounted. It's not gonna rattle like crazy. And we're making this work with the AC line because because if you look right there, that AC line would definitely eat into the silicone coupler. But if you put the hose clamp right over top of where that AC line hits, I think it should be okay. And I don't think that it's gonna eat through the coupler because the metal hose clamp is in the way. And I don't think that bolt with it rattling around is gonna eat through a metal clamp. So we should be good there. We shouldn't have to modify anything else. Now let's hop underneath this thing. Now, when we go underneath on the passenger side, you guys can see that this pipe bends out from the intercooler, goes up to the frame, and it actually bends up over this subframe bar here. So you got a T-bolt clamp there, two inch one, another T two inch T-bolt clamp. This is where you're gonna have to mock it up all loose. And then once you kind of get it mocked up, you can tighten up the hose clamps to hold different pipes in place. But it goes over the subframe. Then this other intercooler pipe comes up by the oil pan, goes into that 45 degree silicone coupler that was on that first pipe over here. And I just put the T-bolt clamp right there so that you can get it at it easy with an impact gun or whatever. Then as you guys can see from this angle, it has a nice bend that bends right around the subframe. Then it goes to a straight silicone coupler. And that straight silicone coupler, for me, it was easiest to only put the one hose clamp on this side of the pipe. And then I could leave this loose so that I could kind of play with this pipe where it lines up to the turbo and get it to seal there properly. And then I'm gonna pop this out and then I will put a coupler on this one after. So we're gonna leave this like this for now because that two inch T-bolt clamp is actually on the Subaru right now because I had to rob it from this kit because my T-bolt bolt clamp broke on the Subaru. So I gotta get another two inch one. But anyways, that pipe goes up and curves up towards the turbo. So if you look from the top, you can see how freaking close this is to the clutch slave line and your brake lines on the other side. Now, what I did to make this work was with this coupler out, I took a grinding disc and I cut out this little section right here of the bracket on the slave. So if you guys can see in there, you can see where I kind of notch it out to give myself a little bit more clearance just so that when this all rattles around because the transmission and engine are gonna move, it's not gonna be hitting anything or rubbing through the intercooler pipe. Then it goes to this other 45 degree coupler that goes to the big old turbo. And another thing I should mention is you do have to re-clock this turbo. If you guys saw it at the start of the video, the way it was sitting, this was kind of angled down and these fittings were all not in the right place, I guess you could say. The way that these
these turbos work and the way that you have to have them on a ball bearing turbo, especially the one from CX Racing because it is a Garrett replica turbo. It's a ball bearing turbo and it has coolant fittings. So it has coolant running through it. So you cannot have your oil feed fitting on the side and have the oil drain coming out the side. You need to have the oil feed coming directly into the top of the turbo and the oil drain coming directly out of the bottom because that oil drain off the turbo is gravity fed. So it's gonna gravity feed either back down your oil pan or in my case, I'm gonna try and run a line down along the back of the engine to the timing cover because we got this nice little chain tensioner cover here sent out to us by our friends over at Jack Spania Racing. And this thing's got a 10 AN fitting on it so that we can just run an AN line right straight to this. Oil drains back into this port, which goes back into the timing cover, which in turn goes back to the oil pan. So this is gonna work perfect. And there's our AN line and all that stuff we gotta run. Now, I don't have any hose clamps on the rat hoses right now, but CX Racing does include a whole bunch of gear clamps for the rat hoses or worm clamps, whatever you guys wanna call. These are all the ones that were included in the kit and you only need four for the rat hoses so we can set those aside. And then there is three extra ones or two extra ones that were in this kit. So I'm not sure what we're gonna use these for, but we will definitely find a place somewhere. For now, just so that we can get this intercooler situation 100% figured out, I wanna notch the frame there so that we can get this intercooler pipe completely installed and we can finalize the intercooler piping because that is my main focus in this video. The last thing I wanna mention about the intercooler, I have tried to fit that crash beam up and it is freaking impossible with this kit. I don't know how on their photos they're showing the crash beam fitted up in front of the intercooler. There's no freaking way. It hits the intercooler every time on this end tanks. The other thing I'm trying to do is look from the side and make sure that the intercooler is 100% straight and the gaps even on the bottom and the top. With the bottom, you do have to push it all the way out as much as you can because like we saw before, it's gonna hit that AC line right there. So you gotta push the mounts as far forward as you can on the bottom brackets. So at this point, we got the intercooler piping like 90% figured out. I'm really, really happy with how this kit's sitting and how everything's looking. That looks freaking nuts, dude. I can't wait to finish this car because this thing's gonna be a ripper. Because what I'm doing with this kit is I am getting absolutely everything installed and making sure it all fits. And then it's all coming back out of the car again. And the reason for that is all of this stuff needs to get heat wrapped. It needs to get heat taped. The wiring harness needs to get heat taped. All the exhaust components need to be very, very protected because on these cars, the master cylinder is right there and your brake lines run all along next to the exhaust manifold and you do not want to boil your brake fluid because that's how you die and that's not fun and this is plastic and if you melt that shit brake fluid everywhere which is a no-no so let's cut this frame and hopefully we don't mess this up because i tend to do that a lot She is almost looking like a turbo Honda. We got all the intercooler piping installed. Everything is 100% routed and we know it fits now. This intercooler pipe here coming off the throttle body, I did have to angle it towards the front of the car and it does clear that lower rad hose right there. As you can see, you can definitely see air through there. It clears the rad fans on the front, isn't hitting anything there. Clears the lower rad hose on the backside down there and it's perfect. Hopefully we could still get our battery tray in here and mount our battery right here but everything clears. It is very, very close, but a little bit of a gap is better than no gap, so I'll take it. But as for what you guys just watched in that time lapse, you can kind of see if I can get the camera in there. That sheet clears now, boys. I had to cut a pretty decent chunk out of that, but it definitely clears. You guys can see air through there. One thing that is a little bit sus about this is that when you cut that, it actually cuts right through that little seam seal that's there. So you guys can see the gap between the metals there, and that's all bare metal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a MIG welder and I'm gonna weld a bead right down that whole section there to fill that up. And then we'll just hit it with some black paint or some primer and then some black paint just to make sure she doesn't rust. But yeah, dude, she fits. I don't know why I'm surprised. I kind of thought that it wasn't gonna fit, but it freaking fits. Now, if you look from up top, we got everything sealed up on the outlet side of the turbo, the inlet side of the intake. Now, our next step is to work on the downpipe and making sure all the exhaust 
exhaust fits and removing the rest of the stock exhaust that I gotta get rid of. But that is gonna be in another video. Because I'm gonna try and make this video not that long this time. I just wanna get the intercooler pipe again, get it all mocked up, and I wanna get a video out for you guys because I have been neglecting this thing and I have not posted a video in probably about a month in this. And before that, it was probably about four months of no videos on the Civic. So I wanna let you guys know that I'm back now. Everything's sorted on the Subaru. If you guys are subscribed to the channel, you would know that I bought the Corolla hatch. I'm actually selling that now and I bought a truck. I might show that in another video soon, but we'll see. That's gonna be it for this video. I wanna keep it nice and short and just get a video out for you guys on the Civic because everyone's been commenting on my videos asking for an update. Here's your update. Peace out, you guys. Thank you so much for watching episode six of the Turbo Honda build series. I will catch you guys in episode seven.